Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Journeyman Project 2, Buried in Time. Welcome to Kenneth Farnstein's lab, Amorax, where it is an hour later. We're supposed to be inside according to the notes, but not now, so we have to find some way of or in order to get to there, so we need a propulsion source. If you remember, the Cheese Girl has a risk of inadvertent propulsion in zero-g environments, which is exactly what we're in right now. So let's use it. Okay, that's not good. Um, yeah, that's actually one thing that can trip you up with the cheese, girl. You need to use it the proper way. So, we're kind of stuck out here in the middle of space. Which means we have to recall, or restore our game. So I'll meet you back where we were. If you also make that mistake, you have to go get another cheese girl again. So even though it looks like you should just be able to use it, actually pointing it this way will make it shoot forwards, propelling you backwards. So what you actually have to do is move it to either side of the screen, as you can notice that the shape actually changes. Any side works. And that will propel us forward. Hmm. Alright, so we finally made it up to the station. We are good to go. Now the main problem with this place is that you are on an oxygen reserve, so you have to keep moving. Oxygen reserves go down every so often, judging by the amount of movements you make and also by the time. Hmm. The place is also completely in ruins, as to the information. You can see all of the ceiling foam that's everywhere. Kind of. Alone? Who is here? Even though, even though we can get a quite a nice view. But of course, like I said, every single movement you make, even though if you're looking up or down, does make your oxygen reserves deplete. So you have to be wary about the number of moves you make. Alright, let's head into the combatants array. Hmm, that always seemed to work in Scooby-Doo. So, I guess I haven't gotten rid of you after all. You just pop up in different spots, like a whatever pops up in different spots. So if corrupting my work not enough, back to finish the job? What? Somebody's not happy. And I thought I was being rested. I'm breathing my last breaths here, and I get visited by Guido, the space vamp. Come all this way to tamper with my sculptures. What are you, an art critic? Um, I'm just gonna keep going. Pressure variance too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. Fortunately, this is the problem that we're going to have with this station in general. Because of how this craft is, um, well, pressure between space and actual places with oxygen is different. So, what do you do? Travel around space looking for derelict crafts you can terrorize the survivors by redecorating while they're helpless? What, what'd you do? Bring a spray can too? Somebody is very agitated right now. If you're here to rescue me, fine. Just get on with it. If you're gonna add insult to injury by messing with my work, I can do without it, okay? Just leave me here to die in peace with my own work. Hmm. What do you want? 
If you remember, if you read the notes, Gage does mention that he hears a voice on the station. This may be, this is probably the voice that he's mentioning. Now, the only way that we're going to get through is that we have to deal with these atmosphere controls. The screen also gets a wonderful idea of what the station was before everything was gone. It's a mining station as well. We'll learn more about all the functions of this station later. But as you can see, most of these places are depressurized because of the, the meteor shower. There are some places, though, that are... Whoops, shoot. There are some places that are pressurized. However, those places are kind of... Well, we can't get to them. The AI Nexus is pressurized. However, it's... I believe it's one of the places that is detached. Now, there are some places that we can pressurize ourselves. However, you have to be in the room in order to pressurize it. So, as you can see, we can't do anything with this. However, we're in the combatants, right? So we can click... Or wait, no. I just click this. Can I pressurize it? I apparently can. Yeah, I apparently can do it anywhere. Okay. Ignore me. Hmm. Never got that message before. I just want to pressurize the thing. Come on. Um. Oh, okay. Because I pressurized the BMS processing, I can't pressurize the combatants right. Never done that before. Alright, that's a way to screw yourself over, so I'm gonna have to come back all the way back here, not pressurize biomass processing, and pressurize where we are. Okay, be right back. Okay, let's pressurize what we were supposed to pressurize. There we are. Oh, what now? Cannot pressurize. Foreign object obstructing habitat wing door seal. Habitat? Isn't the habitat wing where I came from? Now, the real annoying thing I find about this place is that it's... You kind of get mixed in... You kind of get messed up in your directions because you're in a zero-g environment and you can go in a lot of different places. I'm back down to 50 again. Better hurry up. Yeah, so apparently the door we came through is has now this in the way. So let's pick it up. It's a metal bar. This metal bar, I have never found a reason for in the entire game. It, it, it kind of baffles me the amount of pointless items there are in the game when you pick them up. Like, they serve as a purpose of extending a problem, but after you've solved the problem, they have no purpose. Like this metal bar. Now I should be able to pressurize this area. Down to 40%. There we go. And now that the environment is pressurized, we get all of our oxygen reserves again. And we have free roaming abil abilities in this single room, which isn't a lot. However, the next place we're going to with the docking bay is also pressurized, so that's good too. I might just have to... Yeah. It's annoying that I have to go up twice in order to get back to the docking bay door. Which is where we're supposed to be going. Hmm. 
So, welcome to this room. This room is a bit of a puzzle, but not really. What you pretty much have here is that it's kind of a maze, but you have no idea where you're actually going. It's kind of like a movement in chess. Where are you going, anyway? I kind of know where I'm going. I'm trying to get across this room, but it's kind of annoying. Because as you can see, if I move in one direction, in a single direction forward, it kind of just pushes me to a seemingly random spot on in the room within these uh, pentagonal shapes. Is it pentagonal? One, two, three. No, it's heptagonal. That's interesting. Seven-sided. At least it looks seven-sided. It's probably octagonal. Yeah, it, prob it is. Except this one looks like it has seven sides. Oh well, I'm... You seem different somehow. Unlike before, your, your patterns, you're more... Curious, like, you don't really know what you're doing here, do you? You're not the same intruder. Sometimes the voice really creeps me out because it just kind of points at you, the player. The first time you're playing through this, you're, you really don't know what you're doing. You're just kind of following the only place that you can go. Are you looking for something? Me? I am looking for something, but not, not really you. Now, you know you're on the right track when the voice starts talking to you. This is kind of where it can get a bit annoying, because... There's only one correct path, and I don't think you can ever get stuck, but it's very easy to switch your direction and come back the way you came. Leave. That is the habitat wing, so we're not going in the right direction. We have to go to the science wing. They look exactly the same, but they're not. Except for the label. The only thing that is the label. There we are. I don't know why I feel this, but I guess I have an instinct about you. My other guest didn't feel right. You're different somehow. Like, like I should trust you. Another guest. Hmm. Well, we still have only one way to go. Now, actually, we're forced to go around. We can't spin around here for some reason. And if you screw up and go down to the habitat wing, go back the way you came, you have to do this all over again. Luckily, the scanner room is also pressurized. Sorry, we'll have to excuse the scanner. My eyes and ears for the moment. Most of the station monitors are dead. Here. Well, here you are. You found me. Well, part of it, anyway. Not much to look at, I know. But it's what's inside that counts. Well, I guess I've decided to trust you. It's not like I have many options. I don't know, maybe we can help each other out. Why don't you move into the room so we can talk better? Alrighty. I'm afraid this conversation is going to be a little one-sided. My command level voice recognition module got a little jumbled in the accident. Well, I'm Arthur. You've probably figured out by now that I'm not real. But I'm willing to accept it, really. I split off a few copies of myself, and together we're sharing our feelings about it in group, but... Anyway, this is what I am. An artificial... sorry. Non-organic sentient being. If you want to be politically correct. Trapped in this wreck, with the power dying out a little quickly, I'm afraid. I've yet to figure out who you are, though. I think I can safely rule out the fire department. I thought I was pretty advanced, but the technology I'm reading in your suit is astounding. And this is crazy, but it almost seems like an evolution of mine. Look, if you'll let me, I should be able to interface with your logic system and maybe get a clue as to who you are and how we can help each other. 
means an intrusive scan, but we're both lost here, and I need you to trust me. What do you say? Uh, Arthur, you're asking me to trust you who dies in the future. I'm gonna press the little no. Well, figure it out for yourself then. Someone else will come along soon enough. I've had two in one day, haven't I? You'll have to leave the same way you appear. There's nowhere to go from here. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. I don't know how long Arthur's been here since the crash, but... Well, he's definitely felt it mentally. It's actually really... It's actually really realistic and emotional. But anyway, if you choose no, you can easily go back to the yes option. Alright, let's see what we've got. Temporal security? You're from the future! Wow, I'm pleased to meet you, Gage. Wow, you're quite the hero. I guess this is my lucky day. But, that's you. I don't get it. Whoa. I'm starting to get a headache here. This plot's getting a little hard to follow. I'm starting to get the picture here. Hey, this is about me. This is better than palm reading. Perished? Then, you can't help me or you'll change history. I'm sorry. I've probably seen more than I should. I should have never scanned your biochips. Wait a second. Your biochips... Gage, I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Take me with you. Your biochips are derived from the same wetware as my brain, only a thousand times more advanced. If you take me with you, it'll cause a time distortion or whatever, but if I download a copy of myself onto a blank chip, nothing will change. And you need me. I know who framed you, the same person who messed with my sculpture. I can show you what they changed. What do you think? Is it a deal? A companion? Well, I don't really know how many people thought of Arthur. They probably instantly wanted to say no. Well, I can't help you then. The way he says that too, it's... He knows he's... Now he knows he's dead. If he doesn't get any help from you. However, personally, I love Arthur, and I'll probably repeat that over and over during this LP. Yes, big, huge, shiny, curvy... Yes. Great! Oh, you're not gonna regret this, Gage. Now, let's see. I should be able to transfer the data across optically from my core. This is gonna work. That means we've got to get you inside the Nexus, which, of course, is inconveniently detached from the station at the moment. How do we do this? The door release. The decompression should propel you across to the Nexus. I'll have to give you the override code. It's risky, but it's doable. All right then, let's bust Arthur out of here. The emergency release is just above the door. It's a manual release, so I can't do it for you. For some reason. Pressure variance too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. Okay, punch in this code. Three, two, seven, seven, zero. The rest is up to you. Good luck. Alright. Here we go! Emergency door release initiated. Please stand by. And you can even see that we bust open the door and the ceiling foam just kind of tries in to fix everything. You can see it's just kind of trying to fix absolutely everything, but, well, it's a no avail, really. 
There's space all around us, and there's nowhere to go. So the next place we have to go through is through this door. Welcome, come, come, come to my brain, brain, brain. All that I am is contained in that sphere. You're gonna have to open me up. There's a manual code book. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I think it has to do with exchanging the red lights for green and vice versa. You'll have to figure it out. After that, well, if it works, the next time I talk to you should be from inside your suit. Okay, so, and of course we're in a pressurized environment. If you remember from the map, the AI Nexus was pressurized, even though detached from the station. So we have all the time in the world in order to figure this out. So, the whole idea is exactly what Arthur said. Passing greens and reds around in order to get all the reds and all the greens on the opposite sides. So we're placing each light with each light. If you get it wrong, it'll reset for you. There is only one actual way of doing this, so you'll just have to figure out what the heck you're trying to do. So the way you actually want to do it is that you just have to make sure that you have two different positions and then you're pretty much good to go. The first position is probably the trickiest in order to get. You have to start out by move, start moving the reds and then move it like so in order to have an empty space in the middle and greens on both sides. You can actually do this in the opposite way and have two reds. But the ultimate reason for wanting to do this is to make sure that you're able to move all of the nodes so that they're in a pattern of alternating colors. And from here it's actually fairly easy in order to get each of the colors into their respective areas. To anyone who may be listening, my name is Dr. Kenneth Farnstein. I've made this recording in the event that, that anything should happen to me. This message is an appeal. 26 years ago, I undertook an experiment to create a new kind of artificial intelligence. A system demonstrating the traits of self-awareness and, and creativity. My results have been astonishing. At first, I considered the experiment a failure. I had created an erratic, unpredictable, thoroughly irrational program, but it had a curiosity, you see. And occasionally, a burst of insight so lucid I was astonished at the understanding. Not the cold conclusions of the machine, but something more right-brained, more intuitive. It was life. It was a result I, I was unprepared for. Author is not simply a program, he is, he is a person. And I have sheltered him here from the circus I would make of him. I'm afraid I may have corrupted him enough with my obsession for 20th century media. I, I ask that you understand. And if you can find it in yourself to, to protect him for a while. He, he means a, a great deal to me. Not exactly flattering. In less than a hundred years of progress, you can fit me on a chip. So, how do you like my new home? Comfy little interface, eh? So, this is how I think I can help you out. I couldn't figure out a way for you to ask me questions directly, but I've created a comment button that'll light up if I have something to offer. I've actually become pretty fascinated with art history and stuff, and by the looks of what your future self is researching, that study could come in handy. I've also created a help button in case you get stuck on a problem. You know what they always say, two minds are better than one. But hey, you're the detective. I'm sure you'll want to figure it out on your own before resorting to my help. There's more info in the chip's inventory description. You might want to check that out. As to our mutual friend, he was reprogramming one of my sculptures in the biomass processing module. I think he set up some sort of harmonics response, but the only way to find out for sure is to visit the scene of the crime. And that means getting to that part of the station. I gather you don't have control over where you jump to in a time zone, so it may be a trek. The accident really trashed that part of the station. In fact, we may want to come back to it later. Alright, so maybe it won't make much difference when we get to it, but to be totally honest, I'd much rather go somewhere other than back to the station my first trip out of here. 
you know what I mean. We could use a little adventure. All right. Gage and Arthur's big adventure. I like the sound of that. And now we have actually have a use for the blank biochip. Because we had that blank biochip, he was able to put himself onto it. And now we have his... Looks like his brain on here. Of course, you can... He says to go here, but he pretty much just went through everything that was going on. Now, the comment button is just pretty much anything in terms of interesting information. I'll be trying to get as many comments as I can. And also, I will be showing off the help messages as well. The help messages are probably... Like, they say you get stuck. However, the help button offers a little bit too much help in order to solve the puzzle. It pretty much just kind of brands you as a bit of an idiot. And there's actually a penalty for using the help button. Um, the scoring system at the end of the game is actually a lot easier to understand than turbos. Every time you use the help button, you actually get 50 points deducted off of your total score. And there's a lot of help messages. But overall, we'll, I'll talk more about that, but anyway, there is a deduction for the help button. So use it wisely. Or don't use it at all, and feel smart. So, next time... We're going to be heading somewhere else. Actually, Arthur told, Arthur told us that we really shouldn't go back to the Farnstein lab. However, we can complete it at this point. So what we're going to do is going to, we're going to recall, jump back home, and immediately jump back to the station and continue on into new and exciting places. See you next time, everyone.